we descended a long, steep hill to Hastings, a town crowded in a narrow gap between high hills, open to the sea. A wild port without even the shelter of a pier. The vast majority of the inhabitants make their living from fishing or from other seafaring activities. That description was provided by a visitor to Hastings in the late 18th century. The town then comprised a huddle of fishermen's cottages along the steep slopes overlooking the Bourne stream, its ruined castle, a church and little else. But it was all about to change. Taking the waters at seaside resorts was growing in popularity with England's gentry. In 1771, Thomas Hovenden took over the Old Swan Inn and announced, The want of better accommodation has been urged as an objection to company coming to Hastings to bathe in the sea. This objection will be removed by the improved abilities at the Swan. His plans for Hastings received a huge boost when George III's private physician recommended the town as a place for recuperation and taking the seawater cure. Soon, well-to-do holidaymakers were making the day-long stagecoach journey from London to the Swan in Hastings for a fortnight by the sea. A guide published in 1804 shows that the town's career as a resort was well underway. Here, the visitor can find a fine beach and the purest water for bathing of any along the coast, for which purpose great numbers of the gentry have of late years resorted from London and the neighbouring country during the summer season. Fifteen or sixteen very good bathing machines stand to the westward of the town, close to the parade, on which is a small box called the bathing room, for the use of company while waiting for the machines. The assembly room at the Swan Inn has a gallery for music and is the scene of assemblies once a week during the season and tea drinkings every Sunday evening. <laughs>